Isotope has recently released Trash, also Trash Light, which is the plugin that I have open here. And you might have noticed that a lot of people were not very happy about the plugin. So in this video, I want to give you my speculation on why this plugin was received a little bit bad by the people who um, make content about plugins and why I think it is not actually that bad. Let me play some music and dial in what I made here. And so on. So as you can see there are quite a few parameters that can shape the sound in a very nice way here in this specific context. Of course you can dial in drive to get just more drive. You can play around with the tilt and with this other control here as well by the way for tone shaping. You can blend between the four selected distortion types to find the one that suits this sound most and that's not a lot but it's the light version. The full version would also have multiband, a convolver and some effects I guess. But the question is why were people not amazed by the light version and one of the major arguments of what I saw in reviews and read about was that you cannot draw your own shapes for the wave shaper. There are just some predefined wave shapers to choose from, from various categories. People didn't like that because they wanted to have full control. I think part of the problem is that most content creators who review plugins like this are sound designers so they want to be in full control and when they had a certain type of control in an interface before but then the new version comes out and this kind of control is not there anymore they immediately ask themselves why would you just take a feature away why would you not just add new features instead yeah that's something that people often misunderstand about plugins they don't get that the plugin is not only meant to be used by the reviewers but also by like all musicians in general and most musicians don't want to draw their own wave shaper shapes but they just want to select the ones that work very well and use them and that's what isotope team apparently also decided for to just provide good shapes and let people use them i once had a similar case when I made my plugin Nell a vibrato, where I once had, when you go into the options menu, there was an audio menu alongside these other menus. And in this audio menu, you could select the different oversampling stages, 1x and 4x, and the different interpolation types for the delay, linear interpolation, cubic spline, Lagrange, and sync. And at some point, after a bunch of months of using Nell myself, I noticed that I always came back to two configurations. Either I was using it in 1x and so no oversampling but then used spline interpolation or I used the 4x oversampling but then just used the linear interpolation because it was good enough. And then I at some point I wondered wait up there are so many people who don't even know what interpolation is. Why should they even bother with that when the best solution is the same setting over and over again anyway. So I took that away and just put 1x and 4x here on the main interface. I hid from the user that this also changes the interpolation of the delay because it's a not very interesting detail. And I think I made things easier by doing that. Also there was once a text editor where you can type in the size of the buffer of the delay and I also replaced that with a knob that lets you switch between fixed buffer sizes. Of course that is way less control than before where you could just type in an exact number but also it makes things much easier and nicer to work with and I think that's just what they thought here to themselves. 
Now next up I want to talk about another problem that this plugin might have, but this time from the other side. Like what if you are not a sound designer who wants to have full control over things, but you are just someone who wants to dial in the perfect distortion as fast as possible. In that case, this plugin also doesn't have you covered completely. That is because of this XY pad here. At first glance, it seems like a great feature because you can blend between four distortion types and find one that works very well. But like how do you even get started with it because there are a lot of distortion types to choose from the most reasonable thing to do would be to start by putting this thing into one corner so that you only hear one distortion type for now turn up mix and then just listen to the sound while switching between different distortion types I don't know if you noticed that, but I could not change the drive while staying in this menu. That's kind of annoying because sometimes you don't really hear what the saturation is doing if you don't drive it hard. But on the other hand, if you are driving it hard and select the wrong distortion type, then it can kind of create a jump scare moment. So, okay, I could turn on auto gain. Definitely that would help. It would help if it was on by default. That's a little bit of a workflow problem here. Also that there are so many clicks and drags involved in general to get started, you know? Now that already took a lot of time, but let's say that you are done now. You have found four situation types or distortion types that you like. Now you can adjust them. The problem is it only really starts, the creative work only really starts now. Up until now it was all technical stuff and that already took a long time. And that's just not what is expected in a light version of a plugin where you just slap it on something and immediately get started. But then when you're working it out a little bit, it can lead to good results. So I'm not hating. It's just, it takes a little bit longer than it should. And I think that's why the isotope team put a randomizer button here so that, you know, people just don't get too impatient and can just click on it and maybe find something useful. Yeah, that sounds useful. Now there was still a little bit of a jump scare in there, even though I have auto gain enabled. And that's why it's just not a lot of a fun workflow to randomize these distortion types. Would be cool if there was a safer way to go about that. Of course, you could also just use these buttons to move um, between the distortion types. But on this side, there seems to be a bug because you can't reach out to this button, but you can reach out to this one. That's kind of weird. This workflow also doesn't work. It would be cool if you could mouse wheel on the name to kind of move through the distortion types, but that is not implemented as well. So yeah, it's just not a plugin that has figured out the perfect workflows. Also, and I really gotta say that because Isotope is one of the biggest plugin developers of the history of plugin development, like in terms of size and resources and manpower and probably also finances and stuff. They should really 
have some people in their team who know that Bitwig has a weird keyboard handling. And these people should implement that when you press space while having clicked on this interface somewhere that the space key is passed on to the door so that the playback stops. That's currently not the case and that sometimes leads to a little bit of a painful moment. You know when you reach one of these points where it's very loud and you just quickly want to stop playback and you first have to click somewhere on the Bitwig interface before you can do that and you forget about that for a second and it's just one or two seconds lost to loud sound. That also adds up to the frustrating experience that this plugin sometimes creates even though it's really not hard to implement that when you click off into an empty space of a plug-in window that it passes the keyboard focus away to the door. It's just something that you have to think about. It's not hard to implement and just hard to remember apparently. I just want to say usually I don't expect plugin developers to think of such details but for Isotope I make a difference. I do expect Isotope to figure these kind of things out and they haven't yet and maybe that's also part of the reason why especially the reviewers who use Bitwig might have had some bad emotions while reviewing this plugin. Some of these things are a little bit sneaky as you can see. They can add up to an atmosphere of frustration even though you might not consciously notice them too much. But all in all I think it's still a great plugin. For example using an XY pad to blend between four different distortion types is actually not a new idea from Isotope but an old idea that they just gave a new spin. They used it the last time if I know that correctly in Alloy, a plugin that is already discontinued for quite some time and it was some sort of channel strip mixing plugin thingy and there they had a multiband distortion tool with four saturation types that were fixed for each corner of the XY pad of each band and you could move between them. They were all pretty soft so you had to listen very closely which point you liked most but when you have found that point then that was a very satisfying feeling. It was one of my favorite features of ISO top plugins in general and now they just um, gave it a new spin with this plugin so I can understand why they did that why they chose for this to be the main feature I just feel like they could have done this feature a little bit more justice if they had think this through a little bit more yeah but not worth the shitstorm it's an okay plugin and if anyone else who is not isotope had released it everyone would be happy it's just when one developer who is extremely big has released a plugin that is just okay then people are kind of confused i think